Singh. And these are my colleagues, Jim Bush and Andrew Bodine. Today we are going to talk how to deploy a production grade pass platform like Bluemix on top of OpenStack. Oops. Some technical. Ugh. Give me a moment. Okay, so according to a recent survey done by the Crisp Research Company, OpenStack and Cloud Foundry sit at the very top, which is not surprising. Not because they are just very popular open source technologies, but also the way they complement each other, you don't get overlapping functions. So now, with that, let's talk about Bluemix and what it is. So Bluemix is our platform as a service offering. It's built on top of Cloud Foundry, and it allows developers to rapidly build, deploy, and manage applications while tapping into a growing ecosystem of services, not only from IBM, but even from third-party service providers, as well as from the open source community. And it's not only a platform to run your applications. It's also a platform to actually build your applications and we provide an integrated DevOps capability with browser-based as well as Eclipse-based tooling. <coughs> so there are, host, uh, there are a large number of services which are offered with Power Bluemix, mobile services, API management, Internet of Things. I would strongly encourage all of you to go to bluemix.net and try it. It's a global platform. Our shared hosted offering is actually running out of the United States and Europe and leveraging the global presence of software, the public cloud infrastructure on which it is running, we can launch dedicated Bluemix across the globe. It's based on Cloud Foundry, as I mentioned. Now, Cloud Foundry also has a foundation, much like OpenStack, which was established at the December of 2014. And in February of this year, they got the executive director and other board members. So why Cloud Foundry? First of all, it's 100% open source. So that means the tools and the technologies and the apps which you are building, you're not getting any vendor lock-in. Secondly, it meets developers' needs. If you're going to Cloud Foundry with your apps, it's smart enough to detect what runtimes you need, and it provisions them and binds to the services you requested. And last but not the least, it has a very strong and vibrant community. More than 800,000 lines of code have been contributed and more than 1,300 developers across different companies like Pivotal, IBM, HP, SAP are working on it and contributing. So as I mentioned, Bluemix, first and foremost, is an app platform. So it's a platform to run your apps, be it Java apps, Node.js apps, Ruby apps. All these are supported from IBM. And then you can bring runtimes from the open source community, for example, PHP, Python, Go, there are build packs available in the community which you can bring in into Bluemix. So how does a developer experience look like on top of Bluemix? You can go to Bluemix either using a CLI, your favorite IDE like Eclipse, or browser. And under the covers, it actually runs a command called CF push as you push your application. And once it's deployed, you get a URL back. And that's as it is. As it is. Now what's happening under the covers? As you are pushing your application, it hits what is called Cloud Controller, which is the heart and brain of a Cloud Foundry deployment. Cloud Controller is responsible not only for the deployment of your applications, but also for the lifecycle beyond the initial deployment. And once your application is deployed, the routes are registered in the router, and you get the URL back. <coughs> now in the back, your applications are actually getting deployed on a set of VM pools. Now, these are not just any VMs which are provisioned. These are specialized VMs called DEA, or Droplet Execution Agents. So this is the VM pool which is spawned. And your application is actually combined with the runtime and the framework and deployed in containers running on those VMs. So Cloud Foundry uses a container technology called Warden, which is the basis 
and which is where all your applications go. Now, once they are deployed, there is a health manager component in Cloud Foundry, which is responsible for managing the health of the whole Cloud Foundry deployment. And all these different components interact with each other over this NATS messaging bus. So Bluemix is not only a runtime platform, it's also a services platform. So as I mentioned, there are a large number of services available in the Bluemix catalog around mobile, security, big data, database, Watson. So I would strongly encourage you to go ahead on Bluemix.net and try. Now, how does the service interaction look like in the background? So when you, either from your uh, CLI or Eclipse or browser, you tell Bluemix to create a service, under the command covers, the command which is executed is create service command. It actually hits the cloud controller. Now, for every service to exist, there is a service backend, which a service provider has implemented, and there is a service broker. As you tell cloud controller to actually create a service, it fetches the catalog of the services from the service broker. Then based on the service which you have selected, it provisions an instance of that service. Now provisioning of the service instance is just one side. The second side of it is that you need to bind these services to your app. So then there is another command which is executed under the covers, which actually binds your service instances to your app. So that's uh, about the internal architecture of Bluemix. Now Bluemix is actually evolving to be a hybrid offering. So when I say that, what I mean is, when we started Bluemix, the focus was solely towards platform as a service. Now over the course of last one year, we have added Docker container as a service, OpenStack as a service. You get OpenStack based virtual machines or containers which are running in the background on OpenStack through Bluemix catalog as well. And in February at the IBM Interconnect conference, we also announced that there is going to be a new offering called Bluemix Local, which is Bluemix in your data center, which is something you can deploy in your own data center. So we have now three flavors, the shared hosted Bluemix, the dedicated Bluemix, which is a dedicated pod on our public cloud for you, or you can get Bluemix in your data center. Now, a quick introduction of IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. So this is our OpenStack-based distro, and it actually takes all the capabilities of OpenStack and adds some things on top of it. Now, a few of the things is, for example, instead of just managing the x86 platform, it also ha manages our power systems as well as System Z, so you can actually deploy virtual machines there as well. Uh, these drivers have also been contributed to the open source community. In addition to that, there are things like approvals, billing accounts, metering reports, etc., which are very important for our enterprise customers, which have been added as well. Now, what's our goal? Our goal here is to actually deploy Bluemix on IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. So this is what we want to achieve. And how do we go about it? So essentially, the first thing is definitely we need to get OpenStack in place, get it configured. Then what we do is we boot up a machine called Inception Machine, which essentially has all the bill of materials which we need to deploy Bluemix. So it has all the Bluemix releases, the code, the client, and it also has a special agent called Urban Code Bluemix Deployment Client, and we'll talk about it as we go through it. Now, once this machine comes up, it actually initiates a connection, a SSL VPN connection back to our remote orchestration and management server, Urban Code Deployment Server, which is running on software. Once that connection is established, the first thing which our remote Urban Code Deployment Server, which is running on software, does is it checks whether the bill of materials on that inception machine is current or not. If the releases which were baked in, or the stem cell files, or anything, if they're outdated, it actually updates it back. Now once it's updated, then Urban Code Deployment Server remotely, from software, orchestrates the deployment as well as the lifecycle management of this whole Bluemix platform on top of OpenStack. So now, let me talk about Bosch, which is one of the tools which is at the heart and center of this whole Bluemix deployment. The whole core Cloud Foundry components are deployed using Bosch. But not only Cloud Foundry components, a lot of the components which we are adding for Bluemix onto the management side. Within IBM, we are also creating Bosch releases and Bosch packages for it. So Bosch, as I mentioned, is the deployment as well as the lifecycle management tool 
for Bluemix and Cloud Foundry. Now Bosch has an architecture of its own where there is a Bosch director which in turn interacts with a database. But it's essentially a client server based architecture where there are a lot of Bosch agents which go into all the Bluemix components which are deployed. And then it uses those agents actually to make sure that Bluemix is running up, up and running properly. And if not, it can actually take corrective actions. The other thing which is on the right side of this slide is what we call a cloud provider interface which is how Bosch interacts with different infrastructure as a service platforms. So be it OpenStack, be it VMware, be it Amazon Web Services or Google App Engine. If we need to run Cloud Foundry on top of an IIS, that, uh, that CPI needs to be implemented. And the OpenStack CPI has actually been implemented and uses the FOG, which is the open source cloud library, under the covers to interact with OpenStack, to create VMs, to create networks, create persistent volumes, bind them, etc. So how does Bosch work? Bosch actually takes a release, which is a collection of software packages, a MySQL package or a Cloud Foundry package. It then takes a base OS image, which is called the stem cell image. And then there is a deployment manifest, which is the contract in terms of what all needs to be deployed on top of OpenStack. So that deployment manifest tells Bosch that this is where OpenStack is running. These are the credentials to get into it. Use this base OS image. These are the releases of Cloud Foundry and Bluemix. Bosch takes all, all of them together, spawns virtual machines on OpenStack, and then converts them into different Cloud Foundry and Bluemix components. This is a sample manifest, as you can see here. Uh, typically, they can run into thousands of lines based on all different things you are deploying. And you can specify things, how many instances of some particular thing you want, etc. <coughs> so as I mentioned, Bosch is not only a deployment tool, it's also a lifecycle management tool. So you can actually use Bosch to scale your Cloud Foundry and Bluemix instances. So for example, some of the components of Cloud Foundry like Cloud Controller, routers, et cetera, as we define in that manifest and if we change the numbers, Bosch then detects that there are changes in the manifest and you can initiate to scale this environment or reduce this environment on demand. Okay, with that, uh, let me pass on to Jim Bush, who is going to give a bit of details about how did we configure OpenStack, or ICM in our case, for this particular Bluemix deployment. Thank you, Animesh. Hi, my, can you hear me? Great. My part of the project was to get OpenStack up and running in this environment so that Animesh and Andy could get the Cloud Foundry and ultimately the Bluemix local up and running. And to get OpenStack in my environment, uh, I went with the IBM Cloud Manager, the, the uh, 4.3 version. And let me get that. So to get the OpenStack running, the IBM Cloud Manager running, it's actually very simple. It's a single executable binary that you can download and, and install on your server. The first server you install it on is called a deployment server. And it, it takes about three minutes or so to unpack and install with that single binary. And you end up with a running Chef server at the end of that, where you can run, use to then deploy, manage, update, and, and uh, uh, use that to, to work with your cloud. Um, let me go back. The, uh, the cloud manager has sample files that it comes with. It has a lot of JSON files for advanced configuration if you want to do uh, advanced deployment of your cloud. But also with IBM, they are providing YAML files, which are very simple. Uh, configuration files. And so this is an example of uh, ours. It's hard to read, but you get this as part of the ICM code. Uh, what you need to do if you use the YAML file is just modify your host names, your Ethernet interfaces if you have uh, differences from the sample, and, uh, and then you can just deploy and run your cloud. If, uh, if you want, we have some examples here of some advanced configuration that we've done. We've modified some of our quotas. We've modified uh, compute node numbers, we've modified, uh, like we're auto-installing some of our uh, Glance images as part of the cloud deployment, so it makes it easier in, in following steps. There's less configuration that you have to do from the start. So once you have the ICM installed and running, you end up with a Kilo environment. So this is uh, the latest OpenStack that you can have. It has all the OpenStack APIs and uh, all, all the CLI commands that you expect and, and you're familiar with. 
and then with our YAML file, if, if you deployed with it, you end up with all the compute nodes and the controller nodes that you requested and asked for. Uh, we use Logical Volume Manager for our sender storage. Uh, you can also, ICM supports, if you want uh, higher availability, you can use SAN, uh, like NetApp. You can use uh, EMC, XIV, or store-wise storage. Um, and then there's an option with the uh, latest version of ICM to use the uh, HA uh, configurations. And we'll go through that in a moment. So to get my environment up and running, I had Red Hat 7.1, and I needed a minimum of three uh, computers. The one to start with is the... Uh, um, deployment node where the, the knife, the, the chef server is running. Second, we need a controller node. And then you need a, enough compute nodes to, to manage or, and, and support all the Bluemix and Cloud Foundry VMs that are running. So we end up in our environment with our Bluemix local about needing about 250 virtual CPUs, about 500 gigabytes of memory, and then several terabytes of disk for sender and also the compute nodes. So they're able to, to grow and, and, and expand over time. The other requirements we need are we need a DNS server so that the, uh, the Cloud Foundry can get out, the UCD and deployment servers can get out to the, the uh, or, or, or data power can get out to the internet. Uh, we need a wildcard domain name for the Cloud Foundry deployment. And then we need uh, YUM repositories so that any of the Red Hat prereqs that we need as part of the OpenStack install is, is there and available. If you were to use the HA deployment, uh, that's a sample that comes with ICM. That there's some sample YAML files and JSON files. And if you use the sample, you'd end up with a, a three controller configuration for HA. And you can go as many as 10 uh, controllers if you wanted, uh, but, but it starts with three. Uh, the nice thing about this is it not only gives you HA very easily through those YAML files, but it also gives you some scalability, advanced scalability. Uh, you end up with multiple copies of all the services over multiple controllers. Uh, and all load balance using HA proxy and the pacemaker. And then the DB2 uh, under the scenes for the database, they use an HADR replication uh, across all the controllers for the DB2. And then ICM, of course, has the uh, Horizon dashboard that you, you know and love. But to help reduce the complexity, the PhD that, that they were talking about in the keynote that a lot of users need, uh, they've, they've put in for, for end users a self-service UI. And you may notice that this looks fairly similar to the Bluemix UI that, that uh, we have up in SoftLayer. So it, they're trying to get a unified look and feel and common, common feel to uh, using the, the IBM Cloud. And from this, you can start instances, see your instances, you know, destroy instances. And then a key component once we had OpenStack up and running was to get the, the uh, uh, the Cloud Foundry software and to get the Bluemix software on and running in this environment. And so what we have is this Bluemix in, uh, uh, deployment inception image. And we actually share this with several other projects at IBM. And so there's a team that actually makes this inception image. And they, it's a, uh, an Ubuntu image that they've embedded data power. They've embedded the, the Bosch uh, um, software, the Cloud Foundry software. And so they're using it, but it's in a VMware environment. So we needed to convert this over, be able to use it in our environment. So what we ended up doing for this is, this, so they had already created the image. So we imported it and tried to use it. And the first thing we noticed is that the, uh, their swap, they had, they'd put on their VMware instance swap in the last partition of their, their drive. So when we tried to deploy this with OpenStack uh, and we tried to go with any large flavors, the disk wouldn't uh, resize automatically. It, it would get the larger size, but the file system wasn't auto, auto resized. Uh, so we suggested to them to either remove the swap or move the partition out of the last, last uh, the swap out of the last partition. Um, second, we needed to install Cloud Init and the DHCP software so that the metadata service would be able to run. And what this allows us is to get, uh, once the image is deployed, it gets the network, gets the IP address, the host name, um, and any of the advanced user data that Andy's going to talk about in a moment for the, the data power required the, this uh, metadata service. And then actually to do the, the convert from VMware to uh, KVM, we use the QEMU image uh, tool. And it's a tool with Red Hat, comes with Red Hat. And you convert it from VMDK. We went to RAW, imported this image right up into the Horizon, Horizon UI, the Glance UI, and, uh, or, or Glance uh, repository. And then we were instantly able to use and, and, and reuse this inception image. 
with that, I'll hand it back over to Anamesh. Thanks. It was a great overview of uh, how did we configure ICM. Now, one of the configuration points in ICM was also in OpenStack, how did we configure the network so as to deploy Bluemix on top of it. So essentially, uh, taking a look at it from a networking point of view, how did we actually do that? So this is a view of our Bluemix environment on OpenStack from an OpenStack perspective. If you see, as Jim talked about, essentially we have a controller node, we have a chef node, and then there is a center volume node, and then there are compute nodes on top of which your Bluemix deployment goes. Now this is a non-HA model. But the key thing about here is uh, the networking. So essentially, we decided to go with three networks. So one is our private OpenStack management network, which is essentially the communication between the controller and the compute nodes that goes over the private OpenStack management network. As we were deploying Bluemix, there are like around 40 to 60 VMs you can get. All of them actually go on top of that Bluemix private tenant VM data network, which is created using GRE tunnel. Now, the advantage of using the GRE tunnel mechanism is twofold. One, we get a totally isolated environment for all the Bluemix virtual machines. The second is that we can leverage the virtual IPs which come from Neutron to assign to these set of 40 to 50 VMs which we are provisioning. And there is less load on the infrastructure. So this is a networking view in terms of how ICM was configured. So all the compute nodes essentially definitely need one Ethernet interface, which is connected and used for your private management network. You can create your VM data network using the same Ethernet interface, but our recommendation is to actually have one more Ethernet interface because Bluemix or Cloud Foundry is a very chatty environment. So you want a different bandwidth uh, for all the communication which is happening between different Bluemix VMs. And then essentially, you need connection from outside to some of the Bluemix components like data power, et cetera, which are going to act as a gateway for everything into Bluemix. So for that, we actually connected our controller node also to the external shared network. And then Neutron uses that external shared network to assign floating IPs to any of the Bluemix VMs which will need it. And this is essentially a view from how it looks inside from a VM's perspective when that network is configured. So one of the things which we had to do with respect to a lot of the Bluemix components was that work with that model that all the VMs on which they will be deployed, they will just have one Ethernet interface. That's how we actually configured. From a VM's perspective, there is just one single Ethernet interface and a private virtual IP which comes from Neutron. If you do need publicly accessible uh, IPs for these VMs, Neutron handles them using NAT translation and they are floating IPs, but the VM itself is not aware of it. And then there are other tenants. They can have their own uh, specific networking schemes for services. With that, let's talk about Bluemix Data Power, <coughs> which is the gateway for everything into Bluemix. So essentially, all the management traffic, as well as once Bluemix is deployed, any app which is there, Data Power is the gateway into the Bluemix environment. So Andrew Bodine from our team is going to talk about Data Power for a bit. Uh, oh. Hello. Awesome. Uh, so I'm one of the developers that have been working on automating our uh, Bluemix deployments on OpenStack local, our Bluemix local, sorry. And uh, so just some real uh, points, just real quick points about uh, data power. Uh, it's kind of what you come to expect from an enterprise gate, uh, grade gateway. Uh, all of your unsecured, secured streaming traffic is going to be handled uh, via the data power instance and uh, sprayed to the internal components of our uh, Bluemix platform. Uh, you know, just kind of the, some of the other uh, properties of a gateway for at an enterprise grade, you expect it does URL rewrites, service level man monitoring, as well as uh, acts as a platform and uh, platform enforcement point for you. Um, <clears throat> so just getting into a little bit of the topology of uh, our deployments. You can see all of our ingress traffic is being handled uh, through data power. Uh, Cloud Foundry specific traffic will be proxied through to the, uh, the Go routers and into the individual components of Cloud Foundry. And all of the uh, other Bluemix specific services that are a part of that platform, uh, we're handling all of the routing uh, simply through the data power gateway. 
Uh, moving to more of a, uh, a networking view of uh, this topology, <coughs> uh, we had, you know, uh, in order to deploy the data power instance, we had the requirement that uh, the, the, it, an individual instance needed to have a single interface with multiple IP addresses associated with that from the uh, tenant's private network. And uh, we were able to actually automate that simply by using the OpenStack APIs. So uh, first, you would just go ahead and uh, ask Neutron, create a port, and however many IP addresses from the tenant network that you want associated with that. And uh, so we get that back, and uh, we go ahead and boot our data power image and associate that port with the image at boot time. And then through the uh, use of a da uh, user data file or cloud init script, we are going ahead and adding those IP addresses to that interface on boot time, and then modifying the interface config so that that configuration will persist through reboots. <coughs> and uh, this was necessary so that we could support the multiple domains that data power needs to be able to handle into the, uh, the platform components. So whether that be your, uh, the app domains through the Cloud Foundry uh, or the Bloomix specific domains. And uh, <clears throat> so we were able to do this just simply by using the OpenStack APIs and automating th that deployment. Um, and it's from, from the VM's perspective, uh, it's just a single interface on the, on the, uh, the tenant network. Um, so uh, with that, I'm just going to hand it on to uh, Anamesh. He's going to talk a little bit about how we're, a little bit more of how we're orchestrating these deployments. That's right. Thanks, Andy. Uh, so that was a great overview of data power. So data power is actually our entry into Bluemix. So it acts as a device to terminate your SSL traffic or offload your SSL traffic, route your app request to different domains. As Andy mentioned, uh, we have different domains uh, for administrators as well as uh, the apps which are running. And also uh, the customers or the environments where we deploy, they will have their own customer domains. So for all these different domains, we need to provide different SSL certificates. So that was one of the requirements that we need to have these multiple IP addresses so as to provision different SSL certificates to different kinds of clients who are coming on these different domains. So with that, we covered uh, our OpenStack configuration. We covered data power, which is the entry into the OpenStack. We covered the inception machine, which is what is used by our remote server, which is running on software to orchestrate the deployment in the life cycle. Now let's talk about this remote server which is the remote component which is running on top of IBM software and actually responsible for orchestrating the deployment as well as the lifecycle management of this whole platform which is running. So it's called Urban Core Deploy. That is an acquisition which IBM made a couple of years ago. So one of the key functionalities which Urban Core Deploy provides is essentially being able to assimilate code artifacts and binaries from a host of repositories. So as we mentioned, Bluemix is an Bluemix itself is an amalgamation of a large number of components. So that means there are automation codes associated with all these components, including data power, for example, or the inception machine. And these are residing in different repositories, SCM-based repositories like GitHub, RTC, et cetera. So data power acts at the central point in terms of being able to pull code from all these different repositories, and it stores in a local code station. Now, once it has pulled all that code, it can actually push it, right? So there are two ways to go. One is it can actually use a relay server. So the relay server is something which actually can co-locate and co-reside with your agents where you need to push the deployment. So if you have multiple agents where you are pushing the deployment or multiple environments, the recommended architecture is actually to have a relay server so that it can cache the data closer to your environments. Secondly, what it also allows, if your network is very restricted, you don't want to have multiple firewall holes punched if you are having multiple agent machines which are running in your private environment. So the relay server actually can be just one gateway in terms of entry to that environment and your multiple agents can be connected through the relay server. Now, it allows you to define the design of your uh, process in terms of deploying what you are going to deploy. So as you can see on this screen, some of the basic Cloud Foundry components like Bosch CLI, MicroBosch, Bluemix, everything you can define as a component, and you can deploy, de design this process flow in terms of going through a step-by-step -step instructions 
and you can have checkpoints, you can have decisions, markers in terms of if it is a VMware platform, do this. If it's an OpenStack platform, take this route. You can have that, all that automation and define this design process. Once you have defined this, you can actually push a deployment. Now, as the deployment is going on, it will go sequentially through all the steps which you have defined in that process flow and stream live logs to you so you can see all the logs from that remote environment being streamed back to the central UCD server. If something is going wrong, it will actually tell you the error, et cetera, and you can stop, and the next time when you actually push a deployment, you can start from the same point again. It also has this component, uh, concept of components and versions, so it actually knows what versions of each component it has deployed. So if you want to go and do later on updates and upgrades, you can select that only if it is the latest version or a later version of what you already deployed, then push that. So very, very smart from that perspective. Now, what are some of the things which, is, which it is automating under the covers? Essentially, uh, we are using Fog, for example, to do a lot of discovery from OpenStack. So we are discovering a lot of information with respect to security credentials, VM configuration sizes, network subnets, etc., so as to craft that manifest file which I talked earlier, uh, which is used to deploy uh, Bluemix or Cloud Foundry, right? Not only it discovers the information, if there are certain things missing in our OpenStack install, for example, each of the Bluemix components, they require different flavor sizes or different VM configuration sizes, it can actually go ahead under the covers and it creates that. It will also create certain security keys, et cetera, which are needed, and firewall rules, if they don't exist, which are required for our Bluemix deployment to work. Now, Andy talked about data power, right? So data power was a unique case where we actually needed to, instead of directly going through the Nova, we had to go first to the Neutron, create a port, and from that port, we had to request like four IP addresses because we needed to support this custom SSL certificates, which are different for different domains. So that also we automated using Fog. So we first go to Neutron, get a port with multiple IP addresses. Then we go to Nova, actually bind that port with that um, Nova compute instance. And last but not the least, once that VM is provisioned, the data power VM, those IPs, the other IPs which we added, they're not bound to the interface. So that's something we do by leveraging the metadata. But all this is also automated using Fog under the covers. And finally, definitely we use Bosch and Ruby templating mechanism under the covers to do a lot of Cloud Foundry deployment automation in terms of creating and uploading your releases, stem cells, deploying them, etc. And the great thing about Bosch, as I mentioned, that it also allows you to manage the lifecycle in terms of updates and upgrades. So we can use the same central urban code deployment server, which is sitting remotely to do a remote update and upgrade on your environment. So we kind of covered all the core pieces uh, which form our Bluemix deployment. Now, a couple of things which I also want to mention is uh, the work uh, which we are doing on the monitoring side, on the logging side, et cetera. So, and these are key because for any platform which is going to be remotely managed, remotely updated and upgraded, you need to have a view into the monitoring. You need to have a view into the logs, etc. So for monitoring, we actually use an open source uh, project called Graphite, and then there is another version of it, Grafana. So essentially, it's a collector dashboard agent-based model where there are multiple agents which are collecting monitoring data for you. They are streaming it back to a collector, and then there is a Graphite or Grafana dashboard which actually displays it for you. Uh, the database which it uses under the cover is InfluxDB, which is a time series database, which is very fast at processing. If your environment is very distributed in terms of putting, pulling up that monitoring data and analyzing it and producing it for a monitoring view. So this is our architecture. And in terms of deploying the monitoring stack into Bluemix local environments, the other thing which we are using for logging is Elk stack, as it is very popular right now. A lot of you <coughs> might be working on it in different formats. So essentially, Elk stats for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Elasticsearch component is essentially needed for indexing and storing your data. Logstash plays multiple roles in terms of parsing, archiving, etc. And then finally, you have a Kibana dashboard, which allows you a view of the logging data. So again, uh, this whole stack, we will be actually deploying in a customer environment in your own dedicated environment, and then finally we can collect the logging data. Now there will be Logstash servers, which we will also have on software, so as to pull some of that data 
in case of failures, in case of when things go wrong, we need to debug. Uh, so there will be collectors which will be running in our software environment in terms of being able to pull some of the data. Now that data will be filtered. We cannot pull everything. Definitely not any app-related data. So the last point which I want to touch is, uh, as I was mentioning, Bluemix is not only a runtime platform, it's a platform for services, right? So the multiple services which we are going to offer uh, when we take Bluemix uh, in a data center, uh, I cannot talk through all of them. Uh, one of the services which we are enabling is Elastic Caching, where we are actually creating a Bosch release of Elastic Caching, and that's why it's trying to say that Bosch is not only for Cloud Foundry components, for a lot of other services which we are deploying. We are creating Bosch-based packages so that we can deploy it through Bosch. Uh, so that work is almost complete. The other work which we are right now uh, undertaking and in process of defining is how to launch container service on our Bluemix platforms which are going to run in a customer data center. Now, if you have gone to Bluemix, you would have seen there is a container service available there which works on a certain architecture. One of the tasks which we needed to do was take our Bluemix architecture which we have defined the networking concept which we have defined and fit uh, the container service into that model. So this is essentially uh, one view in terms of how we can deploy container service. Uh, the container service which we have right now, it uses Ubuntu as host machines and spins up containers on top of that. Our ICM environments, uh, they are Red Hat based, the Red Hat are the host machines. So one model which we are actually trying out is creating virtual machines Ubuntu-based virtual machines and then adding them back uh, to OpenStack to treat them as hypervisors. And then using the Nova Docker driver there to actually spin up containers. So that's the model. And in terms of uh, how the tenant or networking model changes in that context is that we are creating a specialized tenant called container management tenant, which essentially is going to be the tenant for all the users or all the customers of Bluemix who are registering. And for every user who is getting registered onto this uh, particular container management service, we spawn up a different tenant, and he goes into that particular tenant. So what you can see on the right-hand side is container tenant one, container tenant two. So part of the reason is also when the container management service uh, which we have, which was written, we are relying heavily on OpenStack tenant-based quota and quota enforcement policies for doing billing, metering, chargeback. So this is one model in terms of if we align with the container models or the tenant model, we can actually enforce for each user uh, the billing and the quota, and that is already in place. Now, there can be a better way to do this or an alternative way to do this, which is essentially you get all these different users registered in the same tenant. Uh, what we do need to, uh, that's an exploration we are doing in the background, is how can we enforce quotas and policies within one tenant for different customers who are getting registered. So this is an example how we are getting different services within Bluemix, which you see in the hosted catalog. So with that, uh, we covered what we wanted to cover in terms of taking you through our journey of how we are taking Bluemix and running it on OpenStack. In parallel, there is also an effort to make and ensure that we can run Bluemix on VMware. And you'll be hearing very soon from us in terms of some solid uh, steps going forward with respect to this. Any questions, comments, and you can also reach out to us on our Twitter handles if you have any further questions beyond. Yeah. He had me do it, yeah. Okay, thanks everyone.